Kosin and I'm with Asia Kosin Photography and I'm here today to talk to you guys about personal branding. My whole speech is on my phone, so I'm gonna be looking at that a lot, so please forgive me if I look down. I'll also walk over here so you guys can see what I look like, if that would make you feel better. Okay, so what I'm really here to talk to you guys about is the authenticity in your business, transparency and vulnerability, and how that can deepen your client relationships and build you a tribe and be a whole lot of fun. I'm also shaking a little bit. I'm like not that nervous, but like being up here like makes me shake kind of. So thanks, I appreciate it. I'm just gonna take a couple breaths, it's gonna be great. Also like, <laughs> this, this is great. So this is also just a random slideshow of photos of myself. So um, talk about personal branding, that's what that is right there. There's also gonna be some random videos in there, so um, just enjoy those as they go. So um, although this topic resonates the most with solopreneurs like myself, solopreneurs, I think that's the word, to so people who run their own business by themselves, right? Um, a ton of what I'm talking about today can be applied to any kind of business, large or small, in creative ways that can be very business affirming. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit of my backstory, how I started, how I came to be a photographer, and how I came to be a person personal brand. So in 2010, I started doing photography and I thought I was fantastic. I in fact was not looking back. Um, and I shared all my photos on my personal Facebook. And through that, people started to hire me because they knew me, because they knew me from high school. They were in my college dorm with me. I am positive they didn't love my work because there's like no way that a person with eyeballs could have because it really was not that amazing. Um, but people wanted to pay me for it. And that's how my business started. It started organically because people knew me and they liked me and they wanted to work with me. So the first lesson that we can take from the first part of my story is that I wasn't trying very hard. I wasn't trying to be a photographer. I didn't set out to be like, I want to be like Jasmine Starr, who's like the most famous wedding photographer in the world. I wasn't setting out to be a business person. I was first and foremost doing something that I loved and I thought it was really fun. I also sound like I'm crying. Like, I'm really happy to be here. I don't know why it sounds like that. God. <laughs> So um, I think this is why they say that you have to trust the process because I learned so many lessons there that I wouldn't have if I had just set out to copy someone else who I thought was really successful. So the second lesson to take from the story, I'll share that with you guys over here, is that um, Facebook for businesses suck. And if you guys are business owners, then you probably already know that. Um, but using your personal Facebook is actually really fantastic. So my business Facebook page has like 2,700 page likes and I get practically zero engagement. And I did, see my videos. <laughs> They're so nice. Shauna, I don't know if you're, I mean, Shauna, you are here somewhere. Shauna's boyfriend made this video for me. And what I put this up is to point out that you don't really see my client very much. You really just see me because that's, that's what I'm really going to talk about. Um, so, <laughs> so I can post something on my business page and get like 10 likes. But as soon as I share something really exciting on my personal page, all my friends are like instantly supportive. They want to share what I'm doing. They want to know more about what I'm doing. Again, it sounds like I'm crying. Sorry about that. So, um, this is due to the fact, really, that my personal Facebook friends are like my personal friends, so of course they're supportive, because if you think about any time in your life that you needed support, they're your friends and family, and when you are a personal brand and you're putting yourself out there authentically and with vulnerability, anyone who comes in contact with you via your social media or just in person feels like they are your friend and family and they want to support you, and as a business owner, support really does mean everything. I'm going to smile so you guys know. I am happy. Woo, breathing. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I missed the slide like 12 slides ago, but um, back to my backstory. Now that we have a business that we know grew organically, I knew I needed a name for it, so I named it A Crow Photography, A like Asia and Crow like Croson. Um, you guys may have seen earlier, it looks a lot like acro photography, and so everyone thought I was an acrobatic photographer, which like... <laughs> would be super fun, but was not indeed what I was doing. Um, so that was really confusing. So, and I know that there are tons of businesses out there who are not named after the business owner, and that works great. But for me, my true like entrepreneurship story didn't start until I became Asia Croson, and I moved to asiacroson.com. And the only downside of that was being like, hi, this is Asia Croson from Asia Croson Photography. And it was like really redundant and weird, and people were like, I know, okay, cool. Um, but I also had to pay less when I registered for my DBA because it was my own name. So that was like a nice extra 50 bucks every year in my pocket. Um, so the transfer to a personal brand opened up all these questions about what being a personal brand like really means. That's me Snapchatting. We're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. My boyfriend took that photo, I think it's really cute. Um, so I really struggled to figure out what like my brand words were because I was like, what does my photography like really mean to people? And how do I want my clients to feel? And when I was going through the struggle and like reading all the blog posts about like what the hell brand words are, I realized I just wanted my brand to be me. And so the brand words that I chose were happy, confident, funny, and inspiring. And um, also apparently pretty cocky now that I, now that I kind of say that out loud. Um, <laughs> 
but I wanted my clients to be happy and I wanted them to laugh and I wanted them to be confident and I wanted them to feel inspired by the way that I chose to live my life and I wanted to, oh, I did that for a bluebird. It's really pretty. Some really famous photographer took that of me and photoshopped the hell out of my face. I don't like really look like that. Um, <clears throat> so I totally could have chosen words like ethereal or natural or organized or something that I wanted my photography to be or I wanted my business to be, but that wasn't going to be very sustainable because I'm neither of those things. And the, really the only sustainable thing I could be with my brand is myself. So there's some inspiration. That was a pretty good quote. You guys can tweet me for that one. So um, there's a saying that's like, it's not personal, it's business. And that kind of makes you believe that the person, the business should be separate. And I clearly am like not all about that life. So the personal aspect to a business, like the emotional side, if you will, um, does something that I'm going to read to you when I find it in my thing, solidifies the interaction and indeed the sales. So this is why car commercials make you cry. And this is why beer commercials have like horses and dogs. And I'm not like encouraging anyone to make anybody cry or to like bring animals into their marketing system. Um, but we need to realize that humans love connection. We love knowing people and we don't necessarily need to know a ton about the business, but more about the person behind the business. And sometimes if we are even fascinated by the people without knowing it's a business, like, like the Kardashians, which is my ultimate goal in life. So I think I'm on my way. <laughs> so we've come into the part of the story way back in my slides um, where I've really come into my own. I've become Asia Croson, like capital A, capital C, asiacroson.com. And this allowed me to take my brand into places that it, it wouldn't have been able to go before under acro photography. Um, and I knew that I had a lot more in me. And because my business and me were so much in sync, I had a lot more in myself. So this leads me to my blog, which came up right away. That was really great timing. Um, and it's not uncommon for photographers and other business owners, of course, to have a blog. Um, but my blog doesn't share, oh, this is so not what we're talking about right now. Sorry about that. Um, my blog doesn't share just my work, but it shares um, personal stories about my life, about how I paid my way through college, etc. And the photos on my blog are of me, not photos that I have taken. Although the, the photos that are of me are like me making my friends take the picture and I set the camera up and my friends are all pumped about that. Um, so they're not showing off work, they're showing off me. And this is a part about being a personal brand that can seem really scary because you have to put yourself out there a lot. And I have a list of all the ways that I put myself out there like on a daily basis. And I'm going to go ahead and breathe now because I still sound like I'm crying. <laughs> oh my god, I think that was the first time I breathed in like five minutes. Um, so I do Snapchat like religiously, and there's like 10 of you in here who are like, oh, I watched you snap like on the way over here. See, great, see, it's great. Um, Facebook, both personal and business. I have a personal Instagram and a personal, or a photography Instagram. My blog, my magazine, which we'll talk about. I also have a podcast, and I do a lot of networking. So it's a ton of putting myself out there, and it sounds like, oh my god, this is taking over my whole life, and that's because it is my life. My business is my life. That's my nephew. He's the best. I just had to put him in there, because he's so cute. Um, there's a purpose to that, but I'm so not there yet. So um, there's not too many people that I have in contact with who don't know that I'm a photographer, and that's really beneficial for me because when you're thinking about, oh, who should shoot my wedding or who should do my seniors, and you're not going to choose someone that you don't know, you would probably choose me because you know me and you probably like me. So that's really good for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and skip that since we're like going so fast. So the reason that I have these up is to show you guys that the photos of me and my nephew get so much more engagement than the photo of that beautiful girl you guys just saw, even though I was so proud of that work and she was so beautiful. The people who are following me don't know her and they know me and so if you're looking at like the proof being in the pudding and we all love social engagement on our social media channels the more engagement I'm getting is the one where it's photos of me not photos of my work and of course my work is incredible as you guys can tell um, so that would be horrible <laughs> if I was putting myself out there and my work sucked but people really want to know more about me this is means I'm at nine minutes already and I'm not even like halfway through my speech so anyway if you guys want to follow me and know more about me and my personal brand um, you guys can follow any one of those things Things, and I left 45 seconds to Snapchat, you guys, so I'm going to grab my other phone, and we're definitely going to do that. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. You guys should just keep applauding. I just did my talk. It was so fun. Are you guys not going to keep applauding? Like, keep keep applauding. Keep applauding. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me go over. Appreciate it.